In our Hamon culture, we believe in spirits and lost souls that don't want to leave. I have heard so many stories about people experiencing a lot of weird stuff, but as for myself, I haven't really experienced anything. Well, that was before I met my husband. It all started when we were still dating. He was a Catholic and I was a shaman at that time. We had a long distance relationship and we both lived in different towns. It takes about three hours, close to four, from his town to mine, even though he still comes over every weekend to see me. He would come on Friday night and leave on Sunday afternoon. On this Thursday night, he decided to come and surprise me, and oh he did. He usually doesn't come on the weekdays due to work. It was around 7 p.m. when he arrived. He was going to stay with me until midnight. Since he worked at 7 in the morning, he wanted to get back home and try to get at least one hour of sleep before going to work. On that night, we were both laying on the floor watching a movie together. Soon, it was getting close to midnight, so I decided to get something ready for him to eat before he leaves because I didn't want him to stop anywhere to get food since it was so late. From the kitchen, I could still see him lying on the living room floor on his back. He was facing the ceiling with his eyes closed. I walked over and crawled on top of him and kissed him on the lips and his neck, then went back to the kitchen. I kept on doing that to him, and each time when I went over to kiss him, he always opened his eyes and looked at me, then closed them again. After I was done with everything, I walked over to him and sat next to him. He looked like he was sleeping. I continued staring at him. But then I noticed his eyes were not fully closed, and it looked like he was looking at me. I continued to sit there and stare at him. Then his eyes started moving from side to side, but I still continued to stare at him. It looked like he was looking at me, and all of a sudden he said, Help me, in a very soft and weak voice, almost like he couldn't breathe. I got scared and slapped him in the face. He jumped up and started swearing and swinging his fist in the air. He was breathing so hard and trying to catch his breath. Finally, when he had calmed down, I asked him what was going on and why he was looking at me like that when he was laying down. He asked me why I didn't wake him up, and I said, How was I supposed to know you wanted me to wake you up? And he said, I was giving you signals with my eyes. I was just confused and didn't understand what he meant at all during this time. He told me that when I came to kiss him, he knew it was me because he opened his eyes and saw me. After I continued doing that, he knew it was me. But then the last one, when he thought it was me and opened his eyes, instead, he sees me sitting next to him staring at him. But it still felt like someone was still on top of him, even though he saw nothing. He could feel a heavy weight on him. He could still feel like someone was nibbling on his lips and his neck. He tried so hard to move, but he couldn't, so he tried to signal me with his eyes, but I didn't get it. He tried so hard and finally was able to ask for help. I got really scared when he told me. Right then, I felt weird. My arms and neck had goosebumps all over it. I felt as if my soul had left my body. We decided to leave and go to my mom's house. Standing outside, looking at my apartment, it felt like someone was still in there. This was the first time I had felt this way about my place. All of a sudden, somehow, I started feeling really sad, like someone had come and took over my home. When we got to my mom's house, we told her what happened, but like every Hamong parent, she said that it was nothing and just to not think much of it. It was way past midnight, so soon that he kissed me goodbye and left for home. Ever since that day, I was scared to go home to my apartment. I stayed with my mom for almost a whole month. In the daytime, I would take my mom and go over to my apartment to get the things that I needed. I was starting to feel homesick, so one day I decided to go to my apartment to see what would happen. I packed up all my belongings and got into the car. 
When I walked into my apartment, I stood by the door and looked around. Everything seemed normal. I didn't have that feeling of being scared. It just felt like I was home. I unpacked my stuff and turned on the TV and sat on my couch. I thought it was strange that I didn't feel weird at all, but maybe it was because I missed my home so much. I wasn't scared anymore and just thought of it as a bad dream, but it was weird that every time when my husband came over, he told me that it felt as if we weren't the only ones in the apartment. I was starting to get angry when he told me that because I don't feel anything. We would go and stay at my mom's house, but every time he would come over, he would tell me that he kept feeling another presence in the apartment. A couple of days later, I talked to some of my friends about it, and they said that maybe it's because he's Catholic, and I'm shaman, and as a shaman, we believe in ghosts and other weird stuff. Maybe the spirits around me doesn't like him because he was Catholic, and they were trying to scare him, but not me because I'm shaman. Now that we are married, it's weird how once in a while it still happens to him. Every night when we go to sleep, I always have to make sure my feet are close to his in case it happens. When it happens, he can't move his body, but somehow he could still move his feet, and I could feel it when he moves it. I would wake up and then shake him awake. He would always wake up breathing very heavily. It's also very strange how everything is different from what I expected it to be. In my culture, we believe that people who still practice shamanism experience things like this, compared to others who may have converted to Christianity or Catholicism. Even though my husband has experienced many things like these, he still doesn't believe in it. I haven't experienced any, but I believe it. Well, some of it. I guess there's still more to the world that I don't understand. In 1989, my family moved to a house located two blocks away from Riverside Park in Wausau, Wisconsin. This was around the summer before I was going to enter second grade. With the park being that close, the neighborhood kids and I spent most of our summer vacation there, playing tag, fishing, and bike riding. There's a bridge that connects the main park to another section called Ferns Island. The water, of course, is jet black, either polluted or evil. The kids refused to go to that section of the park because it was the most haunted. The story went that hundreds of years ago, a witch inhabited the park area. There was a boy who was fishing in the area and fell in the river and drowned. The townspeople blamed the witch and burned her in her tiny hut. A bloody battle rose between the witch and the townspeople. Bodies of the townspeople were thrown into the river. Finally, when the battle ended, the townspeople buried the dead and left the area. The witch disappeared, but its spirit still roamed the park. My cousins had an experience at Riverside once. One night, my cousins were hanging out with friends in the parking lot, standing outside their cars and talking. The only source of light was the vehicle headlights. All of the park lights were dead. Gang members once infested the park and the city just gave up on cleaning it. The group heard slurping sounds and splashing water. They looked towards the river and saw a dark figure hunched over near the riverbank as if it was peeling and eating something. The figure turned around and they all saw a pair of red eyes looking back at them. As it walked closer to them, the group jumped into their cars and drove off, never looking back. They told this story to my father. The next morning, my father went to investigate. He came back with a report that there were open crayfish shells and decaying fish on the riverbank, but nothing more. The next story comes from my older brother, CK. He worked the second shift and got off work at midnight. Having such a work schedule, for weeks he hasn't seen his buddies. So during one of his breaks, he called his friends and set up a time to hang out that night after work. They all chose to meet up at Riverside to meet since it was close to where their friends lived and his workplace. After my brother got off of work, he drove past a supermarket where he saw his buddies in the parking lot loading beer into the back trunk of their car. My brother waved at them 
and the guys waved back. He then went to Riverside to wait for the guys. He parked close to the riverbank, rolled down the driver's side window about an inch, then pulled down his seat and lay down looking at the night sky in his car. All of a sudden, he saw a woman with flowing blonde hair running past his car. She then came up to his window and tapped it. My brother got up and asked her what she wanted. At first, my brother thought that the woman was a victim of SA because her clothes were ripped and her hair was messy. The woman was hysterical and crying and she was trying to slide her finger through the opening in the driver's window. She told my brother that, Everyone is dying. You have to help me. An old witch is down there. She's killing everyone. She killed my family. It's so bloody down there. Thinking that she's just another nutcase, my brother quickly closed his window. The woman jumped back. My brother then backed out of the parking lot. Just as he was doing so, his buddies drove into the parking lot, and the woman walked in between the vehicles just as they passed each other. My brother got out of his car and ran towards his friends. The woman was nowhere to be found. Did you see her? Tell me you saw her, my brother shouted at his friends. Who? they asked. That woman. She ran right in between our cars just as you guys were coming in. We didn't see anyone. Then my brother said, Man, what took you guys so long? You guys were just at the supermarket. It only takes two minutes to get here. The guys looked at each other and said, What are you talking about? We were never at the supermarket. We just came from the east side. We had to go pick up some stuff at my house. The group looked at each other and they all left home. Ever since then, they decided never to meet up at Riverside again. Alright, let me start by telling you this. My nationality is Hmong. We strongly believe in the paranormal or spirits or whatever you call it. Anyways, I'm not quite sure what I have experienced. If it was real or just my imagination playing tricks on me. But it did scare me very much because I have never had anything like this happen to me before. I believe it was towards the end of 2004 when this event occurred. I was three to four months pregnant with my very first child. It was early in the morning around 6 a.m. My husband had just left for work. While I was still asleep in bed, I suddenly woke up to this very weird sense that surrounded the room as if I was dreaming. I remember seeing clouds or fogs on my bedroom ceiling. I mean, it was just so weird. I couldn't rule it out if this was even real. It was as if I was being possessed or seduced. My eyes were open, but I was so sleepy. Whatever it was, it did not want me to see them. It was as if I was only dreaming, seeing an illusion or hallucinating. Do you ever feel like when you drink too much and you become drunk, but you're still wide awake and you're seeing stuff in what people do? That's how I felt during that moment. I was lying flat on my bed when I heard sounds of little girls laughing. At that moment, my heart started to beat so fast and I was very scared and sweating. I raised my eyes to look at the end of the bed where I thought I heard the laughter come from. I couldn't see much, but what I did see was two little heads popping up and down at the end of my bed. I could only see their forehead and they appeared to be two little girls playing and chasing one another. Don't forget, I still felt sleepy and the fogs were still around in my room. Then I noticed that the two girls started to walk to my side of the bed where I was lying. I was freaking out so much so I just closed my eyes and pretended to fall asleep. Then I felt the both of them climbing onto my bed with me and I could just feel them looking down at my face laughing and giggling. At that moment, all I knew to do was to close my eyes. This event lasted for a few minutes, but it seemed forever. The next thing I knew, I had actually fallen asleep. One thing to keep in mind was that these little girls, they were also more like me. When they were walking around to my side of the bed, I was able to take a quick glimpse at them and notice that they were wearing our traditional clothes. After some hours of sleeping, I woke up and didn't even remember what just happened. I did my usual chores around the house and just relaxed watching television. My husband got home from work 
which was around 3.40 p.m. We drove around, just cruising sometime between 6 to 7 p.m. It was already dark. While I was sitting on the passenger side, just looking out the window daydreaming, that's when I started to remember everything that happened to me that morning. I told my husband about what happened to me after he left for work. I told him that it felt like I was dreaming, but at the same time it felt so real. My husband did believe me because, like I said earlier, our culture, we strongly believe in the paranormal. I am very confused and so is my husband. We just don't know what it is or why it happened. For nine months, my husband and I occupied one of the upstairs bedroom of his parents' crowded three-bedroom home. After the wedding, it's a Hmong tradition to have the bride reside with the groom's side of the family. The primary reason is to have the wife get accustomed to how the family functions and to assist with the household chores. It was a cold December weekend when the husband and I were moving into our tiny one-bedroom apartment on the north side of town. His parents were out of town attending a wedding with the majority of his siblings. The only people left at home were the both of us, his four-year-old sister Heidi, and his younger brother who stayed behind to help us move. Now to give you a background of his parents' house, which they still reside in today, it was built way back in the 1920s. While renovating the living room, we found old newspapers dating back to 1924. They were still used as insulation inside of the walls. The house has an eerie appearance and dark areas where no matter how much sunlight came into the home, that area would still be as dark as shadows. Moving on to the basement, I remember my husband telling me that when they moved in some 18 years ago, the basement had dirt ground and they had to replace it with concrete. Today. The basement is still unfinished with minimal lighting. It's a scary place to be if one was alone. So with the four of us at home, Heidi and I were upstairs packing the small, fragile items while my husband and his brother were still downstairs, loading our things into the moving truck. The only thing left in our room was the clothes in the closet, the TV, some DVDs, and my treasures, but they were junk according to my husband. While I packed the treasures into a box, Heidi was watching Disney's Beauty and the Beast in the room. I never liked to be upstairs in that house all by myself. I noticed Heidi kept looking at the closet. I thought perhaps she wanted to play dress up, so I pulled out some of my old party dresses and laid them on the floor for her to pick out. But she didn't bother to look at them because she was still focused on the closet. I was a bit concerned, so I sat in the middle between her and the closet. I veered her attention back to the TV screen. Every three minutes or so, Heidi leaned over me and stared at the closet. What is it? I asked. Nothing, she replied. We continued watching the movie. I was so glued to the set that the next thing I knew, she was standing in front of the closet with the door open. What are you looking at? I asked her. I was looking at the giant stuffed bear my husband had given to me for Valentine's. Is that what you want? No. What is that? Heidi asked without pointing to anything in particular. I looked around the closet. I didn't notice anything unusual. What is what? I asked, now very confused. So I opened the closet door further and went through the objects in it. Nothing was out of the ordinary, just clothes, shoes, and stuffed animals I was going to donate to Goodwill. All of a sudden, Heidi screamed and pointed at something in the closet. That! What's that? I looked up again. Nothing unusual. I don't see what you're looking at. Suddenly, Heidi was jumping up and down and still focused on whatever it was in the closet. Her eyes were opened wide. It's a, it's a boy. He's as tall as I am. Who is he? What's the boy doing in your closet? She questioned. What boy? I asked, still searching through the heaps of toys. A few seconds later, it hit me that this was an entity that allowed Heidi to see him, but not me. I screamed and 
ran downstairs with Heidi trailing behind me. Although I didn't see or hear anything, I was still afraid. When we got downstairs and joined the guys, Heidi was giggling. I told my husband what happened. He asked his sister what she saw and she replied, I saw a boy sitting in the closet. He was as tall as I am and he kept looking at me. I tried to talk to him but he can't talk back. It was so funny because she was scared. She continued giggling. I was relieved that she found the situation amusing. I can still picture her face when she saw the boy. Her face went pale and her eyes were wider than ever. I was so afraid that it was going to traumatize her. It's been two years since the incident. The younger brother and his new bride are living in that room today. Recently, the wife said that she had a bad dream and she woke up to find a dark figure standing by the closet. I guess the boy is still there. <laughs>